You were so fat. I'm worried about the baby. Kathy, I didn't gain that much weight. Take a good look in the mirror. You're so fat and ugly. I can't believe you were going to be a mother. I feel so sorry for the baby. Kathy, my mother in law gave me a nasty look and said insensitive words. I'm finally pregnant with the child of the love of my life. I had finally gotten through a difficult pregnancy. Kathy's insensitive words were exhausting me both physically and mentally. I want to think about my child first, but I can't afford to do so. I can't take this kind of life anymore. Do I have to endure my mother in law's words for the rest of my life? Just when I was about to give up, a single phone call would change my destiny. My name is Allison. I am 32 years old. It is no exaggeration to say that I am at the peak of my happiness. So much so that I was surrounded by happiness. The reason being the new life I was carrying in my belly. I was expecting a baby with the love of my life, my husband Oliver. Oliver and I had been married for almost five years. We both loved kids, so after we got married, we just went with the flow and kept trying to conceive a baby. But after a year or two, there was no sign of pregnancy. I thought it was strange, so we had a medical checkup as a couple. I found out that I had a constitution that made it difficult for me to conceive. At the time, I was so shocked that all I could do was cry. I immediately started fertility treatment. But even after a year, there were no results. In addition, regular phone calls from Kathy kept coming. Allison, are you pregnant yet? I'm sorry, but I was wondering if we could spend a little more time together as a couple. Is that your excuse? You're not infertile, are you? Well, that's. Don't tell me you are. All my friends have grandchildren. We have to have ours soon, too. Otherwise, I feel like an idiot for allowing myself to marry a normal girl like you. Sorry, I'll do my best. Don't make me say it every time. What a foolish wife you are. Kathy's words pricked at my chest and steadily drained the life out of me. My body was getting thinner and thinner, and I couldn't even eat. I didn't want to worry Oliver unnecessarily, so I can't even talk to him about Kathy. I couldn't really relax even when I spent time with him. I took it out on him even though it wasn't anyone's fault. I hated myself every day. But Oliver never once blamed me. He always gently took my hand and said in a soft voice, Allison, it's gonna be okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. What's okay? People ask me all the time if we are having a baby soon. There's no way you can understand how I feel. I'm sorry, I don't. But I do want to have kids too. We can't do that. That's why we are doing this. If this is how it's gonna be, we should just get a divorce. When I was about to say that, Oliver shouted no. He hugged me tightly and continued slowly in a voice that sounded like he was about to cry. It's true that I want to have children. But I married you because I love you, not because I want kids. Don't forget that. What's the point of you being with me if we can't have kids? It does matter. Even if I knew from the beginning that we couldn't have kids, I would have still chosen you. I can say that with all my heart. So don't blame yourself about it anymore. Oliver, looking back, I don't think I've cried so much since I was a kid. I was screaming and crying like a baby. Oliver gently wrapped me in his arms. That's when I decided to stop fertility treatment. And to my surprise, a few months later, I found out I was pregnant. The pregnancy was discovered by a test while Oliver was on a business trip. I was so happy, but I couldn't tell him right away. 
What if the baby wouldn't grow up healthy? At least I would tell Oliver when I got the baby's heartbeat. A few weeks later, they checked the baby's heartbeat at the hospital. I heard it pulsing much faster than an adult. And even though I was in the middle of a medical examination, I burst into tears. A few weeks later, they will check the baby's heartbeat in the hospital. When I told Oliver that night that I was pregnant, he froze like a stone. What did you just say? I'm pregnant. Are you serious? This is the happiest I've ever been. We're finally going to be parents. Thank you, Allison. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Oliver hugged me tightly and tenderly. We hadn't laughed and cried together since the day Oliver proposed to me. It's been about six months since then, and my belly has grown a lot. Then one day, Oliver came home from work and murmured a quieter voice than usual. I'm home. I asked him what was wrong. He held his head in his hands and slowly opened his mouth. I was suddenly asked to go on a business trip next week. A business trip? Then it's nothing out of the ordinary. I'll be fine. It's a month. A month? Actually, another employee was supposed to go, but he's in the hospital. He and I are the only ones who know about the client. I see. So there's no one to replace you. My husband nodded his head in response to my question. My due date is the month after next. That's probably why he's anxious about the month-long business trip. My husband is usually a little overprotective. He must feel uncomfortable leaving me home alone during the last month of pregnancy. To be honest, I'm not entirely free from anxiety myself. But all I can do now is give him a good send-off. With a pat on the back, I cheerfully said, "Oliver, you're pathetic. I'll be fine. Go on a business trip for the sake of the company." Well, what if anything happened to you while I'm gone? I'll be fine. I'm going to my parents' house for a home birth in the middle of next month anyway. That's less than a month away. That's true, but I'll have my phone with me in case something happens. And I'll call you as soon as I can. Don't worry, okay? I try my best to convince him, but his expression doesn't clear. I could feel how worried he was about me. I can't keep relying on him. For the sake of our unborn child, now is the time for both of us to hang in there. It's okay, Oliver. And if things get really bad, I'll call an ambulance. But. We'll hang in there together, okay? We're about to meet our baby. Don't dwell on it so much. You're all right. I'll go on a business trip. Yeah. And so, Oliver left the next week for a month-long business trip. I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss him, but I can't say that. I have to do my best for a while, starting today. Just as I started cleaning the house with such enthusiasm, the doorbell rang. Watching my step, I slowly made my way to the front door. I opened the door, thinking, "What if it's a heavy package?" There stood my mother-in-law. "Oh, Kathy, you're late." "Sorry, I was just cleaning up a bit. Just let me in." "What, Kathy?" She pushed me out of the way and entered the house and looked around the room. She immediately started to make sarcastic remarks. You were skipping chores just because you were pregnant, aren't you? There's dust in here. I'm sorry. I just started cleaning. Don't be so quick to talk back. I came all this way to check on you, while Oliver's gone. Oh, thank you, but I'm fine. So, you're not fine. You are a foolish wife. I don't know what you'll do if I don't keep a close eye on you. You don't have to. You're not saying you don't want me to come, are you? She glares at me sharply. 
I choked on my words at the sharpness of her stare, and she gave me a winning smile. While Oliver is on a business trip, I'll come and check on you every day. What? Every day? Yes. You should be grateful. And don't say anything unnecessary to Oliver. Okay? Well, well, I don't think you need to come here every day. I can't have you slacking off just because you are pregnant. You live on my son's money, so don't you dare complain. My hell began that day. Kathy came to my house every day and started looking for something wrong. If there was even a single piece of trash on the floor, she would abuse me mercilessly. Just because you have a belly doesn't mean you can skip cleaning the floor. Why do you make me say the same thing over and over again? Pregnancy is not a disease, okay? As a housewife, you are supposed to take care of the house perfectly. No matter what I do or say, she complains. I do my chores as I'm told, and she always complains. By the end of the week, she even started to criticize my appearance. I'm worried about the baby being born from someone so fat. I didn't gain that much weight. Look at yourself in the mirror. You're so fat and ugly. I feel sorry for the baby. That such a person is the mother. I was so shocked by this comment that I cried right in front of her. But she never apologized and acted as if it was my fault. After a while, I couldn't stand it any longer. I decided to go back to my parents' house. When I called Oliver to tell him about it, he asked me anxiously, You're going to your parents' house earlier than planned? Did you and mom have a fight? No, it's nothing like that. Mom was all set to go check on you. Was she being annoying? Maybe you were tired from all the attention. No, I'm fine. It's just that lately, I've been having a lot of stomach cramps. I thought I would take it easy and go home to my parents. Uh, I see. Okay. Then, call me right away if you need anything. I've told the company that you were pregnant. Okay, I understand. Thus, I succeeded in getting away from Kathy. Only a few days after returning to my parents' house, I went into labor much earlier than expected, probably because the tension in my body had been eased. I called Oliver, and my mother drove me to the hospital. It was hard to believe that this was my first delivery. A few hours later, a beautiful baby girl was born. About an hour after the birth, Oliver arrived at the hospital. When he saw our daughter, he was crying and smiling. She's so cute. Thank you for all your hard work, Allison. No, it's her who did the hard work. Even the labor pains that hurt so much blew away when I saw her face. Mothers are strong, aren't they? Oh yeah, I have to call my mom too. I, I will. She told me to call her when the baby was born. I picked up the phone that was under my pillow and called her. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed, but having Oliver next to me helped a lot. I put the speaker on just in case and waited for her to answer. A few seconds later, I heard a blunt voice say, Yes? Hi, Kathy. I'm just calling you to let you know that the baby is born. Oh yeah. It's a boy, isn't it? What? So it's a boy, right? He's gonna be the heir. So it doesn't make sense if it's a girl. No. You're not telling me that you gave birth to a girl, are you? Surprised by his mother's behavior, Oliver froze with his mouth hanging open. I was convinced that now was the time to take revenge. If I let him hear what Kathy said directly in front of him, it would be solid evidence of Kathy's bullying. I'm sorry, Oliver, but I have no choice but to do this now. I dared to tell her clearly, as if to bring out her true nature. 
She's a girl. With eyes much like Oliver's. She's a pretty girl. Beg your pardon? I said I don't want a girl. Don't say that. Because it doesn't matter what gender the baby is. You've got to be kidding me. What's the point of allowing you to marry Oliver? You are infertile and gave birth to a girl. What a useless woman. Please, don't talk like that. Then she yelled at me. That's enough. A fool like you should stay at your parents' house. What? There are plenty of wives to choose from, from Oliver. I'll find a more obedient and lovely woman for him. I see. But rest assured, I will not be seeing you again. Huh? What are you saying? As if to interrupt her words, Oliver finally spoke up. I knew. I knew that Oliver's patience was about to reach its end. When Kathy heard Oliver's voice, she uttered an inarticulate sound. I could sense that she was clearly upset. O -O Oliver, aren't you on a business trip? It's only natural that I would come to the hospital to see my baby, right? But more importantly, what was that? Well, you told me you were worried about Allison, and yet here you are. You've been bullying Allison. No, Oliver. It's a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? You've got to be kidding me. What you've been doing is bullying. I've never seen him so angry. And even I'm terrified of him. Kathy started pleading with him to somehow get him to forgive her. Oliver, please. Will you listen to me? I was really worried about Allison and... That's enough. I didn't think you were such a horrible person. No, I'm not. I visited Allison every day to check on her. I know you were just trying to bully her. I was a fool to believe you. I despise you with all my heart. And that we'll ever see each other again. But I wish you the best of luck. Wait, Oliver. Please. Her voice trailed off as she continued to call his name. Hanging up unilaterally, Oliver sighed loudly and bowed his head to me. Allison, I'm so sorry. I didn't know this was happening. It's mom's fault that you had to go to your parents' house earlier than planned. I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't want to worry you. and wasn't sure if you would believe me. What are you talking about? Of course I would believe you. Oliver. The tears I had been trying to hold back began to well up. I couldn't hold back my tears, and Oliver gently struck my head. After I was discharged from the hospital, we decided to move. While I was in the hospital, Oliver finished packing. Of course, we didn't tell Kathy where we were going to leave. When Oliver told his father about the incident, he was furious. His father told Kathy that he was divorcing her and kicking her out of the house. Since then, I haven't been in touch with Kathy. Oliver has been receiving messages from her on a regular basis. But he has not responded to any of them. No one knows where she is or what she is doing. As for us, we are both struggling to raise our child in our new home. It's all new and confusing. But life with our daughter, who we finally got to meet, is sparkling every day. There will be many obstacles to overcome in the future. But with the family I love, I am sure we can overcome any obstacle that comes our way. I will continue to cherish each day every day, never forgetting my gratitude to my family.